Terry Doyle, Director for Corporate Development from Nokia. Thank you so much for coming to CERN today. Thank you for having me. We are so excited, as you can see, about yeah, the fantastic yeah, physics opening yeah. in front of our eyes. Yeah. Uh, but these are also testing times and challenging, challenging times for Nokia, mm -hmm. both inside the organization and uh, in your marketplace and the environment. So maybe, Terry, you could share with us, let's start with a basic question that when we talk about strategy, what yeah. does it really mean to you personally in your day-to-day sure. -day life? Sure. And what's, what's the day like of a strategist? Could sure. you share that with sure. us? Sure, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a good question, and I, and I have a fairly traditional view of, of, of strategy. Um, you know, the, the, the requirement of making choices and making choices uh, in order to achieve a goal. And I think the relevant bit about being a strategist in the day-to-day -day bit is that, you know, those choices are, are shaped a lot by, by things that you don't have a lot of control over and that you're making choices in, in a constrained environment. And by constrained, I mean, you don't have a lot of time. You're in a position where, you know, in a very short period of time, you have to come to a decision. You also sometimes don't have the resources. You don't have the ability to go out and either buy data or, or, or get in touch with somebody who has data. And then probably more, you know, more interestingly, um, you, know, you, you don't actually have the money to do it. <laughs> in, a, in an environment where, you know, our competitors are, are, are taking more and more market share, it reduces our ability to make decisions based on, on capital. So, you know, for me, really, uh, in a day-to-day -day sense, it's, it's about making choices, and those choices are what you aren't going to do. So if I, if I uh, uh, have, say, three paths that I could take in terms of making a strategic choice, I really can only pick one. And so the value of that decision-making increases exponentially because of the downside risk. So it's really about making choices. Okay. So actually that makes a neat uh, link to the following question. Um, so using classical strategic management textbooks yes. as yeah. a basis. So could you, could you give a, a practical example where sure. that has worked yeah. or not? Well, I, I may be sort of dodging the question as to whether or not it'll work. We'll see, but you know, um, in our marketplace, we have some competitors. We have two large competitors. Uh, one is Apple, uh, and they have a, a very vertically integrated business. You know, they they do everything from the the hardware, software to the distribution. They are completely aligned, and that experience is part of of what they feel is their value add. And another one of our competitors is. Is, is Google, and they have a, a, a platform which they give away called Android for the operating, an operating system for their phones, and, and they're completely horizontally aligned. And, and so that is a, an interesting sort of marketplace for us to compete in because we have to decide how we're going to align ourselves. And what makes it even more interesting is that very recently, you know, uh, Google decided to acquire Motorola. Uh, and become a handset manufacturer. And that, that decision is extremely uh, relevant to us because it looks as though they are now going to shift to a vertical model from a horizontal model. And that's a huge shift in our marketplace and understanding what it means to both our competitors and their ecosystems of, of partners that work with them, but also what does it mean to us? Uh, and I don't know that I can say definitively whether or not that decision to, to buy Motorola is going to work out and the, and the strategy that they're executing against will work out. But I think it's a great example of, you know, traditional models being vertical or horizontal alignment and then a shift and a fairly significant shift. And what does it mean? You know, uh, Google licenses this Android software to to Samsung in Korea, and Samsung is one of their biggest uh, users of this platform. Now they're facing uh, a situation where their their supplier is a competitor, and what does that mean to them, and what does it mean to us? So, uh, in my mind, a very interesting uh, example of a concrete decision in the marketplace, a strategy being pursued, which may or may not work. So, Terry, what you're saying, if I understand it correctly, is that textbook classical textbooks may not actually grasp the dynamics and the rapidly changing situation you mentioned from you know ver horizontal to vertical exactly. and the relationship among the players uh, competitors exactly. and, and, exactly. and collaborators and the ecosystem effects of that you're absolutely right yeah that's yeah. that's interesting so um, 
Our audience is, uh, as you know, uh, academics, part yeah. of the strategic yeah. management uh, community. That's right. And um, could you could you advise us? Are, are there some practical areas where the research that is done by our academic colleagues could be of interest and yes. use for you? Yeah. Could you highlight yeah. that a little bit for us? Interesting. Please? Interesting. You know, uh, I think that um, one of the things that uh, I've had a little exposure to, but. Uh, I think that's an important part of, of being a practitioner of strategy is the human element. And uh, I think it's probably sometimes overlooked as, a, as an important piece of the decision making. And by that I mean, uh, you know, on a bunch of levels, on a, on a very simple level, you know, I as a strategy practitioner have a life, you know, I have a family, I have, I have human elements, you know, pressing upon my day. Can I get a bit of exercise today to, you know, to get rid of some stress? You know, Though all those elements uh, factor into being able to go out and, and make a decision. You know, decisions aren't made in, in a vacuum. And I guess the other piece of it is, is the human element of, 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 of implementing or, or carrying out a strategy. And, you know, as, a, as somebody who, who does this, it's, it's very difficult to divorce the, the execution of a strategy from the development. You know, because you think you're it's inevitable that you think, okay, well, I've actually got to get John here to, to go out and help me carry out this execution, uh, uh, execute this strategy. And as such, you know, is he going to be up for it? Gosh, he's had, you know, he's had uh, uh, two weeks of working every night till three, three in the morning. You know, is he going to be able to help me go out and sell this idea? You know, those are all elements which are very important in the day-to-day -day practice, which I don't think are highlighted enough, you know. And, uh, and you know, there's a final element to that execution piece, which is, you know, that there's a dynamic in making those decisions, particularly in the corporate environment, where, you know, people's egos, people's influence, the human element comes in. Uh, in a previous life before Nokia, I worked uh, buying companies. And uh, one of the things I learned very quickly was that the, psycho the psychological element of decision making was actually very important. You know, you know, in governance sense, a, a group of individuals sit around and they are responsible for the shareholders' uh, money and they, they make decisions like these based on economic cases with uh, financial models and all the right pieces for a rational decision. But in that decision-making environment, a group of four, five, six individuals, there may be a psychological element between two people, you know supporting you the last time you were trying to buy this company to help your division you should be supporting me and that horse trading sometimes and it's it's maybe diminishing a bit too much to call it horse trading but it's an important part of that decision making process which I think is very very important and doesn't necessarily get reflected in the academic world. Oh, that's interesting so so you're saying you would like to learn more about what what academics have have on their work about how the strategist thinks and and how he operates and and the process or let's say the the human interaction exactly. aspect. So that's that's exactly. what will be useful for you yeah extremely oh. useful yeah yeah okay well thank you so much terry it was well, a real thank pleasure you for thank you me. thanks for coming it. thank you